Hey everybody, this is Josh and Carolyn with Homesteading Family and welcome to this week's episode of The Pantry Chat. Hi. Hey, we're on uh, mm-hmm. we're on episode 8. Episode 8. Wow. Well, yeah. it's been fun. We've gotten so much positive feedback from you guys about um, you guys really liking the pantry chats. But I got to say, we we need some of your feedback on subjects you want us to cover. Yeah, we've got a few things in mind for the next few weeks, but um, this is this is a lot about answering questions that are helpful to you guys. So uh, send in some emails, comment here, mm-hmm. yeah, and let us know what are some specific topics that you want to hear about. Yeah, and I know I get a lot of questions about things like running the household, and we'll cover that here too. I think yeah. we'll open it up to what you guys want to know about. So yeah, but keep please. them com- keep them coming. Keep so, them coming. So yeah, we can get ahead of it. <laughs> and good. um, but you know, I wanted to just bring up you, you did a pantry chat number seven, right? Uh, while I was gone, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, did you like that? Oh, that I was loved really it. Good. I think that was great. We had a lot of good feedback back about it. I think that was really helpful to right. a lot if of people. If you didn't see that, that was uh, where I was interviewing my good friend Jamie and we were talking about um, hope for autoimmune disease sufferers. And that was a little different topic than we often get into, but yep. I, I got a lot of really positive feedback from you guys about how you've just struggled and you got so much hope from that message and some really good practical directions too. So that was a lot of fun to get to have her here. Really cool. I, I, I had fun watching, being, being on the other side. <laughs> That's good. That was fun. But um, so before we get into the, today's topic, which is what is homesteading? So that's episode eight. What is homesteading? We're going to talk about that a little bit. What okay, what great. has it been? But what is it today? Because it's it's really different. The definition today is different than what it was a hundred years ago. And we get those questions, right? You know. So that's the subject we're going to dive into here in a little bit. But right now, let's just catch up. What uh, what what's what's going on with you? What have you been up to? And. What's coming? Well, the snow is melting. Our days are getting yeah. longer here. Yay. We're at I, over... I think we got into some 60 degree oh, days. Oh, we did. We here. got that warm. Was, that it, was it nice. It was like a tropical yeah, heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are all running around barefoot in the <laughs> snow outside. Right. It was great. <laughs> but um, with that means that the chickens are starting to lay significantly more eggs. Oh, man. I'm seeing like, what, near 20 a day right now? Yeah, 20, sometimes up to 25, sometimes Ooh. down, you know, a wow. bit more than that. Yeah. But that means that I'm starting to get a real buildup of eggs in the pantry. So uh, I am going to start preserving eggs here. Um, yeah. And it's going to be preserving eggs in earnest real soon because they're just going to start laying more and more as yeah. the hours get longer of daylight. So this next week, I am going to be making noodles, egg noodles for the year. We like that Whoa, in our chicken noodles. A noodle year's soup. worth of egg I'm noodles? I'm going to try a year's worth. And that is new to me. I've never put up a year's worth of egg noodles. Wow. But okay. I have the eggs right now. We yeah. might as well use them and get them in a product and get them in the pantry ready to use all winter long, well, all season long. And that's really key, right? You've got mm-hmm. a variety of different, um, you've got a PDF out there and, right. and some different instruction. People don't really think about preserving eggs, but yeah. yet everybody that's raising chickens usually gets into an egg glut and you're trying to sell them, give them away when really they, they can be preserved. They can be. So that you've got some eggs to get you through the slow season. Because the other side is when you're having to go out and buy these really expensive eggs to try and match the quality that you've got and you're feeding your hens in the middle of winter and you feel like oh I'm spending so much money on eggs why am I even feeding the hens so trying to even out that production and get it through the winter so anyways that's my big project right now oh and starting some seeds I'm so excited they're coming up so what about you what have you been up to oh man uh trimming fruit trees getting getting the fruit trees cleaned up as as you guys know we're um we just bought this property last fall and so uh, we're under the gun. We've got a lot to do yeah. to, it was from some older folks that, um, nice gardens, nice trees, but they were getting older. They couldn't keep it up. So not only are we just have spring getting ready to crank up, we've got a lot of back work that's got to yeah. get done. So, uh, trimming the trees, yep. getting the greenhouse going. I mean, ideally I'd have had that going in the fall, but we didn't. And so I've got a lot of soil amendment to do. And, uh, hoping to get seed started this week as well in mm-hmm. the greenhouse, both in the ground and our start, start getting our tomatoes and peppers and right. and definitely our brassicas uh, you yeah. know, in their seedlings. So, Yay, I am so, so excited about is. fresh vegetables. Oh, I just can't yeah, wait. Yeah. yeah, snow's not gone, but it's feeling like it's spring close. and it's starting to crank up. Yeah, Yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So um, let's see, we're usually trying to do a question here yeah. from somebody. So you okay. ready, ready for that? I'm ready for a question. Okay. So this was a good one regarding the pantry and storage from, uh, let's see, let me me bring this over here. So from uh, Gay. And Gay said, I might need a few ideas to help build my pantry supplies. 
we have been doing more stuff from scratch than ever before, especially baking. Can I have some more ideas as to what will keep well in my pantry as far as dry storage goods? Okay. So not canned goods. I know, you know, flour, sugar, baking powder, those are a few, but do you have any more suggestions? Absolutely, yeah. Well, that is definitely something that I like to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I can talk a long time about my pantry, right? And, um, you know, I think the biggest tip that I would have for somebody who's looking to start storing more and more in their pantry right. is to start taking note of what you buy every time you go to the store. What is regular that you're like, oh, I ran out of this thing again and start stocking up on that item. And honestly, that's going to give you a bigger return than just getting a lot of one thing that you use here and there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every time you go to the store, if you find that you're buying ketchup, buy eight ketchups in one month and get it on your shelf so you've got it there. And then when you get down to two, stock up really big again. So it doesn't always have to be just the basic from scratch stuff. Although those are great and those are a really good thing to have on hand. Well, and what you're bringing out here, and this is a little little sideways, but right. bulk buying and how important in this lifestyle. So there's a lot we're trying to grow, preserve, right. put up, right? But we can't grow everything. Mm -hmm. We can't produce everything for ourselves. So part of the economics Right. of this lifestyle is bulk buying and right. getting in the habit of buying more mm -hmm. when you make a trip, order more. Right. And uh, you often can get a better price for that. Mm -hmm. Less energy into how much you're buying, right? right? You're buying ketchup for six months. Yeah. <laughs> you know. um, but back to dry goods. Back to the was, dry goods. The okay, so question. the actual answer to that question, um, whole grains are a great place to start. Mm. Of course, you have to have yeah. a way to either mill them or you have to eat them whole, which is a great, you can eat wheat whole, you can eat oatmeal whole, you know, and it's whole grains. Um, the one caveat to that would be brown rice because that does go rancid rather quickly, but okay. any whole grains that you eat besides that. But even the brown rice, buy enough to get you for six months, that'll be fine. And that okay. will be a nice big bulk, it'll sit really well. Beans is another really good thing to have on hand. Um, any dried foods is really good. So having, you know, a big stock of raisins, if you put that in your baking, um, dried cranberries, things like that. So, that and you, you and so you can dehydrate your own. You can certainly right? dehydrate your own. Or, or even freeze dry. That's, mm -hmm. that's the price points coming down on freeze dryers, but mm -hmm. that's something I'm excited about. One of these days, they're going to get a little more affordable. Right. Right now where, they're really where, expensive. Right. Where we can freeze dry some yeah. food and have dry storage there. Absolutely. And so if you can do that, that that's awesome that's really way good. to go. Yeah. Now your different sugars, um, that's really important in our house. Like we'll keep a brown sugar and a white sugar. Um, your, uh, let's see, I said beans, your different yeah. grains. So about nuts? The nuts. Yeah. Uh, again, those will go rancid rather quickly if they're shelled. So down here on the bottom shelf of the pantry, I've got five gallon buckets with whole walnuts. And, and what, uh, so what's the shelf life on whole, if people can find whole nuts? Oh, to, if you can find to, whole to buy bulk, nuts, what? it's multiple years. It's, okay. it's stored, two, stored three dry. years if they're stored yeah. that way. If you have them shelled, they really need to go in the freezer because they just go rancid yeah. so quickly. So that's not worth buying. Um, your baking powder, you can get probably a six month to one year supply if you have good dry storage of yeah. that. So you've got a long ways that you can coffee. coffee, coffee. We're, we're coffee drinkers. Mm -hmm. um, so, but only coffee if green. we're talking green right. because you're going to roast it at home because right. if it's roasted, it's going to go rancid. It, it, really yeah, it, it loses its quality very quickly. Yeah. So so definitely talking, you, you've do got we, to roast your own beans. Do we have a video out on roasting coffee? Josh roasts our own coffee and so we buy, I try to buy at least a year's I worth of green coffee. I don't think we have one public. I think okay. we might have one in the membership group. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a public one. Definitely yeah. I can do that at some point. Yeah. Do, do a simplified version of that. And then if you're buying in all your stuff from the store, not making it yourself, having things that are just staples on hand, you know, just again, take note of what you're buying and what you're consuming and start bulk buying that because that's where you're going to see that grocery savings and that's really gonna pay off. Right. So. One more that I know that people are interested in and that is storage and just how to store the dry goods, how right? So we, oh. we store a lot mm -hmm. of ours in food grade 50 gallon, 55 five. gallon barrels. We don't have any right here. Yeah, the 55 that's, gallon drums, right. the big ones. And we fill those up once a year for yeah. a lot of our wheat, our oats, salt, mm -hmm. sugar. But that's, that's a bit much. That's another good yeah, one salt. to have. Get yeah. good quality salt right. in bulk. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
but that's a little large for some people, and it's definitely large if you're just getting going. We didn't do that when we were learning it. how to bulk buy. We didn't go straight to the large barrels. We started in five gallon barrels, and that's right. a good place. But you're still learning fill those up, food grade. Yeah. Well, and we still work out of the five gallons. Mm -hmm. So even though we have the 55 gallon drum out in storage, we'll go fill up our five gallon buckets, bring that into the house because, you know, right. working out of a 55 gallon drum is a little inconvenient. So Absolutely. bringing that in and working out of the kitchen in the five gallon buckets. And so that's what's going to be go. probably more practical for right. most people. And then as you, you work up, because there's a whole budgeting that you have to do mm -hmm. with that to get in the bulk buying, but right. then you can even have better savings as you, as you move up noodles and spices about a year's worth of spices is yeah. what you want to buy because they'll start not being so strong after that but yeah. spices and herbs are great things to have on hand too cool. so all right well gay we we hope you're catching this and hope that helps and everybody else yeah that uh fills out the pantry a little bit absolutely so we better get into yeah, it. yeah <laughs> we better get into it um today's topic is what is homesteading and we get questions, not as much what is homesteading, but how is it different than it used to be? And there's definitely folks out there talking about it. And, and maybe you're not out on a big piece of property, but are you homesteading? You know, mm -hmm. what is that? Because I think our modern idea of at least what we want to encourage is different than just, you know, going out and settling a piece of land. Right. Yeah. So I think to answer that, I want to start with a little bit of history. And, yeah. and what most of you know that, you know, homesteading... Uh, actually what has been an, an act of government of Congress in different countries in our country where the government was essentially giving away land mm -hmm. to people to to populate an area to improve it to put it into production mm -hmm. and so people could settle a piece of ground and they could claim the title to it after they improved it right usually that was putting it into agriculture some places it was putting so many trees on it almost always putting a, a, a dwelling mm -hmm. on it and, and then you had to survive that. You couldn't just go and do it. You had to survive <laughs> yeah. it for five years in most cases from my research. And then you could claim that title. We're not doing that today. Hardly anywhere is doing that. There's, there's no federal program. And I, uh, Alaska was one of the last states to have a state program. I understand they don't have that anymore. Got it. But um, we still have that spirit, and I think that's what we want to get into. Is, yeah, because is this spirit. is one of those words that have kind of changed definitions mm -hmm. throughout history, and some people have a hard time with that. They don't like that it's changed definitions and that we're using it so freely nowadays for a set of skills or an idea, um, when in our recent history it really meant going and getting that free land and right. proving it up, right? But, but that free land represented something, right? And so right. the people that we think of when we think of the original homesteaders, mm -hmm. they were moving away from something yeah. to something. They, they, they were moving from a problem or a challenge to opportunity right. in their minds. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is the connection. That, that is the idea to explore because that's exactly what's happening today. Whether or not you're going out to a large piece of land and proving the whole property as far as, far as putting it into production, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different goals that we have as homesteaders. Right. That's right. And I think, um, you know, when you look at what the people were doing back then, they were leaving kind of the known world, right? They mm -hmm. were leaving what everybody knew, what was normal, what was comfortable. Yeah. And they were kind of walking away from a lot of that. And so many, so much of what we do on a homestead right now is very similar. Like we're breaking mold with the normal, right? Yeah, absolutely. And choosing to take the path that's going to cause struggle and challenge and hard work for an opportunity. For an opportunity and for certain absolutely. rewards. So in a large sense today, we're moving away from a lot of modern systems, mm -hmm. right? And we, we'll talk about in a minute about the grid maybe, and not just the electrical grid, but we're moving away from a lot of modern systems. They, in turn, were moving away from their modern systems, their modern conveniences. Right. And for, and to go and struggle for, you know, freedom, mm -hmm. uh, you know, might have been for access to clean food, clean air. Definitely a lot of the cities back then had a lot of hardships and, and were crowded. Getting away from the disease. Right. Cities were right. very big disease right. centers. A lot of times there was no work and so there was opportunity to go out and try to prove a piece of ground and turn it into something that was agriculturally productive. May not have been as much for health reasons for them yeah. as it was for possibly economic and opportunity reasons, mm -hmm. but um, there was still that movement toward that goal away from the, those modern systems, right. what were modern systems to them. Right, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. So today, homesteading looks a little different. Mm -hmm. So today, we're not usually moving out onto a new piece of land. Sometimes, sometimes we're moving well, out. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people are, but yeah. not always. And that's not where, 
you're getting started. And that's right. actually pretty cool because yeah. then they went from whatever environment they were in into raw ground. Yeah. A lot of times they didn't have skills. Yeah, a lot skills. of these people were, you know, they were professionals in the city. They were very much removed from a country style of life, right? Yeah, there were and some that were professionals. You have a lot of documentation yeah. of people who really had no experience with a country style life moving out and homesteading right. and the challenges that went with that. Right. Yeah. Yep. So that's in some ways very similar to us today. Yeah. What we have today that's really cool, though, is, and, and what we try to encourage, mm -hmm. is so we have this spirit of, you know, we're, we're moving away from some of the industrial systems, but we can do that. You can do that where you are right now. Right. That, that's been a journey for us, yeah. and you don't have to just leap from here to there and take that kind of risk. We can move that direction. Yeah. Right where, right where we're at. We've Absolutely. done that over the course of the years and built up to where we're at, and we see a lot of people, and they're doing what they can where they're at. So, but what are some of the systems we're moving away from? So as modern homesteaders, we would say we're modern homesteaders. It's a lot of you out there that are modern homesteaders, whether you're on a large piece of land or whether you're still on an urban lot um, or somewhere in between. But what, let's talk about what are some of the things that we're moving away from in this homesteading movement. Yeah, I think that's a really good discussion. I think we talk a lot about wanting to go off grid, right? Mm -hmm. As, but that term is generally associated with the electrical grid. Right, electrical, water. Right. Yeah. And so I think it's important to note that there's actually a bigger sense of off grid. Right. Right. There's a lot of other grids. There's a lot of other grids that, that you know constrain us. We don't want yeah. to be tied to the electrical grid, but what are some of the other grids? That... So the food system is yep. the major one, yeah. right? Absolutely. You, we are completely tied to this grocery store system, and if that breaks down, we have a problem. But we're also constrained to what they have to provide. Right. We don't have any control. The cost associated yeah. with that. There's a lot of different constraints that go on there, and a lot of people are looking for freedom from the control on the food aspect. Right, and security right? in their own food Absolutely. system. And that's some individual security in producing mm -hmm. it, but also local and, and having multiple local producers. Right. right. The medical system is another one that we're very tied into and dependent and, on the medical system. And those are linked. Those are very linked, I, yes. I think it's something that's very important <laughs> yes. to understand is that we have such a large medical system that we're dependent on because the food system is failing us. Yes. Right. Getting Absolutely. good quality food for, for a reasonable price is very, very challenging. Yes. And so we have a depletion in the quality of our food. That's causing medical issues that, you know, to try to keep it simple for this conversation, that we now have this monstrous medical system. Not that it's not needed in places, mm -hmm. but we're now dependent on it. Absolutely. Because we're yeah. putting our money into the medical system yeah. and not so much into a good food system. Yeah. Yeah. So by fixing one, you're kind of able to start addressing the Abs other. Absolutely. Then, of course, we do have the electrical system. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. part of it. Now, um, while the older homesteaders did not necessarily have electricity, although some cities were being electrified by the time we were homesteading, um, they did have other types of power supply systems, mm -hmm. whether it was having coal delivered to your house, having you know different resources that were available in the cities back in those yeah, days. Yeah, they were starting to have gas. You know. um, water supply, yep. there was you know sewage, all of that sort of stuff was coming into play in the cities, definitely by that period. And so people were walking away from that. Some modern homesteaders are doing the same with the electrical systems, right. being on different, you know, getting back to having your own water supply, whether that is a well or a spring. And, I, you know, I think that's something to bring out because a lot of people seem to think that if you're not going off grid by meaning going off the electrical grid, the plumbing grid, that you're not really homesteading or you're not really doing it. And that's just not true. It's not we, true. We have to make choices individually what's best for our family, for our situation, and which things to tackle. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of you guys know we are not off grid. We we will be eventually. In terms of electrical. I'm sorry, in terms of electrical. <laughs> we're near, we're, we're very much close to off grid food wise. Yes. We're not near as dependent on the medical system. Right. We're not, the education system is a whole nother discussion. There's a whole nother one, yeah. Um, and we've chosen to prioritize some of those first while building other skills and backup systems that all moves towards then eventually, yeah, Let's let's cut off the electrical grid. I mean, right. we're off the water grid on our property. That's great, mm -hmm. but I, I just I want to be clear. I think it's important for folks to understand that you don't have you don't have to. And I say that's not the first place to go for most people. Yeah, because that is 
huge. So this is a major difference from old time homesteaders mm -hmm. to new homesteaders is that to be an old time homesteader, you had to leave everything, take this giant risk, walk away from everything and take your family a long ways away and just like you're starting from scratch. And you gotta build skills from scratch from and scratch. a piece of property from scratch. However, as a modern day homesteader, you can grow a few tomatoes in your backyard and you are taking the first steps towards breaking the chains of that food grid, yep. towards a little bit more freedom, a little bit more health. So we really have the opportunity in this space to be able to slowly walk down this journey. Yeah, right? and build skills as you go. That's right. why we will encourage folks a lot to start smaller, whether yeah. it's starting with a smaller garden or just working with the space you have. Maybe it's you know some canning, maybe it's just some bulk buying. Mm -hmm. But we have that opportunity today, like you're saying, to to work into it and build skills so that we're moving in a positive direction, but we're not taking so much risk. Yes. Because one thing that we have seen in our, in our journey, nearly 17 years now, is other people, they've gone too fast. Yeah. And it crashes people. I yeah. mean, there's been some TV shows just on that. It makes <laughs> homesteading look bad. But, um, you know, you, you take a huge risk to dive in all that way yeah. and and that's not necessary today to be homesteading and to be moving in that direction absolutely and so in that way homesteading today really is a lot about the mindset mm -hmm. right yeah it's really do you have the mindset to start being more of a producer than a consumer right and I think that for us that is a key is that trying to look at something and got not go hey I want to go buy that thing but ask how can I produce that how can I make that at home? And that, sorry, and no, that, that's, that's a, a mindset that, that is not, today's economy, the way we live today is very much a consumer economy yes. and a consumer way of life. And so there's a lot, there's a lot to do. That's yeah. a big transition. <laughs> and so by starting small, by looking at what you have, what can you do? What do you not need to buy? Mm -hmm. What can I make? What can I can? What can you, you know? mend or repair right. you know, and keep using? Right. Then you're moving in that direction. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that gave us hope. And hopefully that gives you guys hope that maybe you dream of a certain lifestyle. You dream of more independence that you can get there right. uh, over time. Yeah. And, and starting one thing at a time and, and developing that producer mindset. Yeah. For anything to be sustainable, you have to produce more than you consume. That's good. Economically on the soil mm -hmm. and so yeah so just having that mindset of of producing that and of making a increase right? right turning everything that you do into an increase do i have a little bit of extra can i stash a little extra for a rainy day can i give something away to a neighbor can i sell something so that all comes into the mindset of a modern day homesteader more than I have to be on 50 acres of land with no power, right? Yeah, and no, and, and yeah, that can be- Or 120 that, acres. Right, I think. whatever it is, and that, that can and often is a train wreck if you uh -huh. haven't developed that mindset yeah. and developed those skills. Right. And um, so I think that's what we want to encourage everybody here, right? Is Absolutely. that wherever you're at, if you are embracing that mindset and, and you are, picking up skills where you can and making the most out of what you have, even if you're not where you want to be yet, mm -hmm. you, you're homesteading in the modern sense. You're yeah. moving in that direction and you just keep growing. And, you, and feel you, confident in calling yeah. yourself a homesteader. You get to be part of the homesteading family too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because even if you, you know, find yourself in an apartment and that's not where you want to end up you have dreams maybe of that land mm -hmm. you have dreams of going bigger but you're learning how to bake bread you're learning how to store food you're learning how to do some growing of these something growing something in pots growing you know on, basil on the patio. On your balcony right. yeah absolutely you are taking the steps to break the chains of those different systems that really are holding us back from maybe the freedom that we want or the opportunity that we want, even if that's a health opportunity for our children.
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, we want to see more people collectively doing that mm -hmm. because everybody can't just make a big leap. But right. the more everybody does a little bit of something, mm -hmm. not only are we building individual security or freedom or independence, mm -hmm. we're starting to build something collectively Correct. Yeah. with whatever steps you can take where you're at. And to me, that's really exciting because it's not just about self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. None of us are self-sufficient. We need community. So the more that you do for yourself, not only are you doing it for yourself or your family, mm -hmm. but you're benefiting the people around you because you're building resilience. Right. Absolutely. And a network. And, yeah. and we need that as much as we need individual um, independence. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we like to say you're only as strong as your weakest neighbor. Right. right. Yeah. And so helping to build that into your community, into your systems. Now, I wanted to address one other issue about modern homesteading versus old homesteading. Okay. That is that those old homesteaders left everything. A lot of times they sold off all their furniture. They didn't have room to take yeah, it. Yeah. The people around them were saying, you're crazy. You are crazy <laughs> to do what you're doing, right? I, I can just imagine what opposition people faced in that. And if you have homesteaded very long, if you have started learning the skills, you are going to find that people are gonna say, you're crazy. <laughs> they tell us that we're crazy all the time. Why would you go to all that trouble to grow your own food when you can just go down to the grocery store? It's so easy. Yeah. And I think that that is a really strong tie to our historical homesteaders, to the modern homesteaders, <laughs> that, you know, to be a modern homesteader, you gotta have at least one person telling you you're crazy. <laughs> right, so you're, you're, you're on the right track. You're on the right track if people if are saying right. you're crazy, right? right? That's right, you're, you're stepping off the wide path right. onto the narrow path. So and you are not gonna be normal, you're not gonna be labeled as normal, and in fact, people are going to kind of scratch their heads at, what are you doing? Like, yeah, seems why? Why would you do that? Why, would, why, you do why that? would you give that up? As a matter of fact, we had an interview today yeah. that we were talking to somebody about, and just they were bringing that out, that, yeah. that you realize how, how crazy that looks to other people. Yeah. And yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. You know, homesteading, growing our own food, home educating, home business. Mm -hmm. Having home, a bunch of medicine. kids for us. Yeah, yeah, having a large family. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. does. It looks, it looks crazy. But just, um, I guess I want to encourage people who are getting that feedback from people. I know it's hard. Some people write us and say they're getting that feedback from their own family, from people going, what are you doing? We don't understand. We think this is crazy. Uh, there is a large community of people out there, and we really are a homesteading family, yeah. you know, and we have to be able to connect yeah. here and to encourage people here because people won't get it, but... We get it, and there's a lot of people who do get it. So keep on, even in the adversity. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we're uh, running down on time. Okay. So um, next week, next Pantry Chat. Okay. I think we're going to talk about why we homestead. Ah, uh, so, why Josh and Carolyn that's right. homestead. We're, we're going to dive into our journey a little bit right. and and um, what motivates us and, you know, why we do what we do and, and maybe part of how we've, you know, what our journey's been. Good. Good. All right. Well, we will link to that. We were talking about that egg PDF on preserving eggs. I okay. have that download. So we'll put a link to a video on that or something somewhere in the description. Okay. So Sounds you can good. look to that yep. and um, keep an eye out for the next pantry, pantry chat. chat. And don't forget, please give us a hand and give it a thumbs up or a like and subscribe share. and share with anybody that you know that would be encouraged by Pantry Chat. Yeah. Okay? Absolutely. Great hanging out with you guys. See, See you, you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>